Hi, sixth grade students. This is Liz Baldry. So we are going to continue our work on light this week. And just to recap a few things that we've learned, we have learned that um, light travels really, really fast. So it can travel around Earth eight times in just a second. And it takes it actually about eight minutes for the Earth um, to receive light from the sun. And we've learned that we only see objects because they either produce light or they reflect light. And this light enters our eyes. So what you're looking at right now is the electromagnetic spectrum. We've also learned that there's only a part of light that we can actually see with our naked eye. So we call that visible light. So there's a lot of light sources that we can't see with our eyes. So we can't see radio waves. We can't see um, TV waves. We can't see x-rays and gamma rays. Um, so there's only really a little section of that electromagnetic spectrum that we can see with our eyes. We've also learned that light travels in waves. And that's um, really why, why we're studying light with this unit, because heat, light, and sound all travel in waves. So um, we've also learned that light is can be reflected, and that is when light bounces off another object. And we have learned about um, refraction, and that's when light bends through a medium. And so a medium is what light can pass through. So air or water or vegetable oil, those are all different mediums. So um, heat can travel through mediums, and um, light definitely travels through mediums as well. So um, we've also learned that um, white light is composed of a bunch of different colors, and our eyes bend the colors, and then our brain sees the white light. So we will play a little bit more with prisms, and prisms separate light into individual colors. So that will be fun when we get it up. So we are going to be working on a couple of new vocabulary words, and those are transparent, translucent, and opaque. And so some objects are transparent, and some are translucent, and some are opaque, and we'll be learning about the differences between those. We're also going to be learning about um, what it means when colors are absorbed. So you're going to be learning absorption just means taking in the color. Um, so we're also going to be working on a little bit more with separating light this week and just how, how light is made. So um, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Anna Robinson. In this Lord Energy video, we're going to take a closer look at light. What we see as light is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which refers to many types of energy released from stars including our own sun. Light occupies a space between energy and matter. Light acts like waves, a feature of energy, but also has properties similar to photons, one of the smallest particles of matter. Light travels at the fastest speed allowed by the laws of physics, 186,287 miles per second. Even at these speeds, it takes 8.32 minutes for light from the sun to reach Earth. A light year refers to the distance light travels in one year, nearly six trillion miles. The human eye only detects a tiny section of the electromagnetic spectrum. We interpret different wavelengths of light as different colors. Violet has the shortest wavelength in visible light. After violet, the visible spectrum moves to blue, green, yellow, orange, and finally red with the longest wavelength. Objects you see absorb some frequencies of light but not others. We only see an object's reflected light. We see grass as green because the grass absorbs all light frequencies except green, which it reflects back. In situations where the full spectrum of visible light occurs, such as sunlight, we see the combined wavelengths as white light. If no light is present, we see black. An object appears black if it absorbs all visible light frequencies. Light reflects when it passes through glass, water, and our own eyes. Refraction causes the light to bend, changing direction according to Fermat's principle. Fermat's principle states that light, when entering a substance, chooses a path that takes the least time. As different colors of light have different frequencies, each frequency adjusts to a slightly different path. This effect causes the breakdown of full spectrum sunlight into the colors we see in rainbows and sunsets. One of the most striking properties about light is that it has color. To understand
understand the phenomenon of color, it helps to think about light as a wave. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about waves in general. Imagine you're sitting on a boat on the ocean, watching a cork bob up and down in the water. The first thing you notice about the motion is that it repeats itself. The cork traces the same path over and over again, up and down, up and down. This repetitive or periodic motion is characteristic of waves. Then you notice something else. Using a stopwatch, you measure the time it takes for the piece of cork to go from its highest position down to its lowest and then back up again. Suppose this takes two seconds. To use the physics jargon, you've measured the period of the waves that the cork is bobbing on. That is, how long it takes a wave to go through its full range of motion once. The same information can be expressed in a different way by calculating the wave's frequency. Frequency, as the name suggests, tells you how frequent the waves are. That is, how many of them go by in one second. If you know how many seconds one full wave takes, then it's easy to work out how many waves go by in one second. In this case, since each wave takes two seconds, the frequency is 0.5 waves per second. So, enough about bobbing quarks. What about light and color? If light is a wave, then it must have a frequency, right? Well, yes it does, and it turns out that we already have a name for the frequency of the light that our eyes detect. It's called color. That's right. Color is nothing more than a measure of how quickly the light waves are waving. If our eyes were quick enough, we might be able to observe this periodic motion directly, like we can with the cork in the ocean. But the frequency of the light we see is so high, it waves up and down over 400 million million times a second, that we can't possibly see it as a wave. But we can tell, by looking at its color, what its frequency is. The lowest frequency light that we can see is red, and the highest frequency is purple. In between, all the other frequencies form a continuous band of color called the visible spectrum. So, what if you had a yellow pencil sitting on your desk? Well, the sun emits all colors of light, so light of all colors is hitting your pencil. The pencil looks yellow because it reflects yellow light more than it reflects the other colors. What happens to the blue, purple, and red light? They get absorbed, and the energy they're carrying gets turned into heat. It's similar with objects of other colors. Blue things reflect blue light, red things reflect red light, and so on. White objects reflect all colors of light, while black things do exactly the opposite, and absorb at all frequencies. This, by the way, is why it's uncomfortable to wear your favorite Metallica t-shirt on a sunny day. All right, sixth grade scientists, so I really liked that video. I liked how it really demonstrated um, how waves work and the properties of waves and that heat, light, and and sound all travel in waves. And remember that they're all forms of energy. So um, the other thing I liked with that video is that it really broke down color. And we're going to be looking at the um, at how light is separated this week and um, some of the vocabulary words that go along with that. One of the things I really liked is how it showed how um, different colors have different wavelengths. And so color is a wave that travels through space. And um, you can see how on this photo or picture um, that the red wavelengths are longer and going through the Roy G. Bid, so red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Going in that order, that's how we see color in a rainbow. And, um, if you go down that order starting with the red, the red wavelengths are the longest. And then your indigo and violet, those are the shortest wavelengths. So that is something that you do need to memorize. So we're going to watch another little video on how prisms work and how they separate light. Light dispersion and refraction through a prism. Have you ever noticed that diamonds sparkle in sunlight? Ever wondered why? They sparkle and seem to be giving out different colors. Just like oil spilt on any surface showcases different colors. The reason behind this phenomenon is the refraction of light. Before we understand what refraction is, let us conduct this easy and cool experiment of extracting a rainbow from white light for this experiment, you'll need a prism, white light, and a dark room where the refraction can clearly be seen. Procedure. 
Take the prism and keep it on the table. Ensure that the room is considerably dark for the light to be obvious. When light travels through the prism, it splits the white light into seven colors. These are violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. They appear in the same order, just like in the rainbow. Observe the light ray carefully inside the prism. Notice that the light ray bends at two different points, one when the light is entering the prism and another when it leaves the prism. The question is, why is the light being dispersed into the rainbow colors? Explanation. Prisms are made up of glass. The seven different colors coming out of the prism constitute seven different wavelengths. Each color represents a different wavelength of light. These different wavelengths travel at different speeds in the glass. This is the main reason for the formation of a rainbow or spectrum when the light travels through the prism. Another point to be noted here is that the angle of refraction is different for these colors as they have different wavelengths. When light touches the surface of the prism, refraction takes place at the boundary of the prism. In example, boundary between air and glass. Then the white light is separated into its component colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave due to a change in its medium. When these wavelengths reach the other side of the prism at different angles, refraction takes place at the surface of the prism, i.e. at the boundary of the glass and the prism, and the angle of refraction is greater when they leave the prism. This separation of visible light into its different colors is known as dispersion. All these colors constitute the spectrum. The angle of refraction, which a light undergoes when it travels from one medium to another medium, is determined by the refractive index of a given medium. This is the reason why the diamond sparkles in broad daylight and makes it shiny. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. All right, sixth graders, so I just have this little simulation to show you again about the wavelengths of different colors. So right here, we've obviously got the color red, and that's got the greatest wavelength here on our spectrum. So we're going to add orange. So again, think Roy G. Biv, red, and then orange. So we've got a little shorter of a wave, and then we've got some kind of in-between colors. Um, here is yellow, and then shorter. green. Okay. Check out the different colors and we've got kind of the mix um, between your green and then dark green and then we've got a couple different blues. You just see that the waves are getting shorter, a little bit tighter. And indigo and violet there. Pink. And then again, if we go back to the red, look how really long that wet, that red wavelength is versus like our purple. Really nice and short and tight there. All right, sixth grade scientists, thanks for all your hard work with this unit. Um, we are going to be ending the session with just looking at absorption. So absorption of light is just when you have got something that is pretty much soaking in the light more than others. So um, this is a cute little fifth grader who did this video. So we're just gonna watch him for a minute. So you see these people in the picture? Good. The one in the middle is wearing light colors. The ones with that are wearing darker colors. The girl is reflecting more light, so she is not heating up. And the people beside her are wearing dark colors, so they absorb more light, which means they are going to heat up. All right, sixth graders, thanks for all your great work. Um, so this, as this fifth grader just shared, that the darker colors absorb more light. So we've also looked a little bit about um, on how pr prisms separate light, and we're going to be working more on that. So stay tuned. Thanks for all your hard work.